We're going to Hosea. Last time we looked at chapters 1 to 3. And chapters 1 to 3 are pretty much Hosea's story. Um, how God used the prophet um, as an object lesson, as demonstration of his love. And um, in chapters 4 through 14, we're going to more or less see how that applied to Israel. Um, so from the personal to the public, uh, from the individual to the nation, uh, that's, that's what we're really going to look at tonight in the book of Hosea. But let's pray and ask God to give us wisdom. Lord God, you're the God who loves, the God who pursues, and yet, you're the God who will bring judgment, punishment. There is an end to your patience. Father, we pray that you would help us to keep our hearts, hearts of flesh, not hearts of stone, Lord. We, we need to be your people, upheld by your strength, guided by your spirit, light in a dark generation, salt in a world that's decaying. Father, we pray that this would be a reminder this evening. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Go take yourself a wife of harlotry. Uh, that, that had to be shocking words. And then, yet, I think Hosea, as he thought through it, was like, this does make sense. This is exactly what God has done. Um, and we, we, we think we have all these treasures from our sin and God says, no, they're blessings that I've allowed. I'm sustaining you even though. And, uh, and then he, he pulls back. Um, he commands that Hosea to um, buy her out of the slave market, the auction block, and uh, he does. So we're going to try. I'll make no guarantee, but we're going to try. 4 through 14. <clears throat> and uh, parts of me were like, but how do you skip over some of this? And uh, we're just going to, we're going to go with whatever we manage to cover. Um, but we're going to start in Hosea 4. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. All right, so God says, look, this is, this is the case that I have against you. This is why I, why I think, why I know you're a harlot. This is why I know you have not been faithful. Um, there is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. All right, so again, this, this comes up so many times in this book, and I'm still trying to wrap my mind around it. How do you forget God? How do you, as a nation who habitually, religiously remembers the Exodus, okay? They, they, they knew what the Passover was. They, they celebrate. You know, they, some years were much better than others. But this is not a nation that forgot where they came from. And yet they've forgotten their God. Uh, and it comes up over and over again. Um, and so, um, the, the challenge is, again, language, okay? Um, do they know there's a God? Yes. Do they know there's a God in the sense of Genesis Chapter 4, the man knew his wife, Eve. 
right? Because that's the knowledge of God that they lacked. There is not an intimacy of knowledge of God. That's what's going to come up in this book over and over again. It's a, a nation that knows, oh yeah, there's a God. You know, the Jews believe in a creator. I'm pretty sure of that, right? He's out there. Whatever he's doing, okay. what are they lacking? They're lacking intimate knowledge of God. They're, at, they're lacking. Hey, I have a God who loved me, who died for me, who redeemed me, who cares about me, who, who desires the best for me, who, who sets these guardrails up so that that I know where I'm supposed to go, and that's what he desires for me. Um, verse 2, By swearing and lying, killing and stealing, and committing adultery, they break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed. And again, this is, this is like Amos saying, it's, it's sin upon sin upon sin upon sin upon sin upon sin upon sin. Upon sin. It, they just keep adding it up. And... The other thing that I noticed as we, we will go through is God is using the whole image of ad adultery as not only a problem that they have, but as a problem of idolatry, right? That they're following uh, other gods when they're supposed to be intimately involved with Jehovah God. Um, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. Also, I will reject you from being priest for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. And again, how do you forget this, this law that, that makes you unique and, and different and special? How's the United States gotten where it is? Didn't we start out with good roots? Yeah. How far have we strayed? Have we forgotten God, the law? Yeah. To a great extent, and we're going further and further, right? Um, so notice that not only have they um, no knowledge of God, that they have forgotten the law of God, but if um, the, the idea in verse 1 is not just that they're, um, they forgot about him, but that they actively reject him. Right? So it is a choice that they're making uh, to not just Oh, wander away, but now they have decided we've got better things, better gods, better ways. We're going to go our own way. Um, and the problem is, is that their, their sin is going to bankrupt them. Verse 7, the more they increase, the more they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people. They set their heart on their iniquity. It shall be like people, like priests. So I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their deeds. They shall eat, but not have enough. Right? My, my problem is, is I eat too much. Right? And, and I know it, and you feel heavy. And the picture is, is that they, they will have a feast before them that they'll consume it and still feel hungry and still be um, malnourished and, and not why? Because they're they're eating the wrong stuff. They shall commit harlotry but not increase. They they have ceased obeying the Lord. <laughs> um occasionally I have wished this power over my children that 
I would have the power to make what they're attempting fruitless. You know, I'd like to see you fail at this because I know it's not good for you. Right? But I don't have that power. <laughs> the problem is, is that God does have that power. And so if I pursue the wrong stuff, he can just take it all away. And no matter how hard you work, you will watch it just disappear. We, we take for granted that, you know, we work hard, we get more. That's really a blessing of God, not a guarantee. Unfortunately, the, the, the idolatry of Israel, he, he talks about the fact that they, they've gone after wooden idols um, and you know how, how ridiculous that is. So uh, let me jump us over to chapter 5. We are never going to get to 14. <laughs> and that's okay. Chapter 5. Um, so then he addresses the priest. Um, tells them to listen. What, what's their role? Their role is to lead the people. And if you remember there in verse, uh, in chapter 4, he was talking about like people like priests. Unfortunately, the priests are becoming like the people instead of the people becoming like the priests. The, the, the idea was God had set those who would follow after him and they would follow after them. And, and that way, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Right? There is to be an example and we're to follow after. But the priests were not. Um, verse 4. They do not direct their deeds toward turning to their God. For the spirit of harlotry is in their midst and they do not know the Lord. The pride of Israel testifies to his face. Therefore, Israel and Ephraim stumble in their iniquity. Judah also stumbles with them. With their flocks and herds, they shall go to seek the Lord, but they shall not find him. He has withdrawn himself from them. All right, so I don't know how good you feel that you are at hide and seek. All right, I used to think I was fairly good. Um, I knew the church better than any of the teenagers, and I could hide if I needed to. All right. Um, I don't know what it was the other night. Somebody reminded me of it, but Elizabeth Sechi had the most piercing scream when I would step out of the dark and go, boo, because <laughs> she hadn't seen me yet. <laughs> right? So, great hiding skills, nothing compared to God. God says, look, if I withdraw myself, you'll never find me. You can't. And the problem has got had gotten to be in verse four that that they weren't even considering. Wow, we we need to repent. We need to turn around. We need to find God. May we be careful that that we we don't get there. Right? That that our pride, verse five, doesn't testify to us that we are we're we are not heading in the right direction, and and we're too proud to get there. Um, Notice again, Hosea is a prophet to the northern tribes. Israel and Ephraim uh, would refer to them. But again, he, 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 he's warning Judah, hey, look, these guys are just about to be taken into captivity. Do you see what they're doing? Don't do that. And yet they would. <laughs> do we? Um, And, and yet, as much as God is calling out the sin of the people, as much as he's reminding them that their problem is, is that they're impenitent and that they're, they're, they're hard-headed and hard-hearted, yet he continues. Um, jump down to verse 15. I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. Right. So God says, look, you, you've sinned, you've sinned, you've sinned. I'm going to withdraw myself and you'll never find me. Hmm. But 
love you so much that I cannot, I will not, I, I made a covenant with you, with Abraham. You are his, his children and you're my bride and I will, I will come and, and I, will, I will wait upon you so that you will acknowledge your, your offense. Chapter 6, um, verse 1. Hosea the prophet calls out, Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Is that a reference to the resurrection? I think so. I don't think we get to the other one. that um, I'm not sure we'll get there, but let me hit that when we get there, I guess. We'll do it that way. On the third day, he will raise us up. Indirectly, at the very least, I believe that he, he's making a re reference uh, to the resurrection. Verse 3, let us know Again, okay, so what's the problem? They've forgotten God. They, they got walked away from the, re, the knowledge of God. They've walked away from the knowledge of the law. And then, so in contrast to that, he keeps telling them, hey, look, what we need to do is we need to repent. God is willing. God wants to restore us. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Let us get back to what he's told us and, and, and let us devour it. Let us, let us eat that because that will be filling. That will change us. That will turn our hearts his going forth is established as the morning he will come to us like the rain like the latter and former rain to the earth i know this year has not been one of those years where we're looking for rain but we have had years right where we couldn't put water in our pools and we couldn't water our lawns and our lawns look brown and and you're just thinking oh god please let it rain but that that's that was much more critical to, to the Israelites in an agricultural uh, community. If it doesn't rain, they don't get to eat. And so God's coming will be like the refreshing rain, right? The, the, the reminder that, that God is faithful. Um, o Ephraim, what shall I do to you? O Judah, what shall I do to you? For your faithfulness is like a morning cloud. Your faithfulness, children of Israel, is, is like a morning cloud. It's there and it's gone. God's faithfulness right, continues to pursue them. Verse 5, Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and your judgments are like light that goes forth. I desire mercy and not sacrifice the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Again, that whole outward obedience or heartfelt obedience. God says, look, I'm not really looking for the, the outward motions. What I'm looking for is for the heart of my people to be seeking after me, to know me, to, to be intimate with me let's go to chapter seven chapter seven when i would have healed israel then the iniquity of ephraim was uncovered and the wickedness of samaria for they have committed fraud a thief comes in a band of robbers takes spoil outside they do not consider in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own deeds have surrounded them. They are before my face. Um, and, and through this chapter, again, he, he's calling them, uh, reminding them that, that, that they've been unfaithful. Verse 10, he, he brings up this, the pride of Israel testifies to his face. They do not return to the Lord their God nor seek him for all this. Uh, in spite of their sin, they're for the most part, they're not ready to turn. Ready to turn. Um, 
So we were at the wedding yesterday, and uh, Pastor Doug uh, Jones was there as well. So Brandon and I and Doug sitting there talking, and and uh, we got to talking about one of the challenges that Hornell has is that there are a lot of um, addiction problems in, in in that community, and um, the the thing Doug reminded me of again is you can counsel people a lot but if they're not ready to turn that's a hard road right there there has to be a, a desire to to seek for him so what God has been saying is you're not seeking me and I have been putting out warning flags and I'm getting a little more direct and I'm putting pressure on and it's not because I hate you. I'm putting pressure on you because I need you, want you to turn. I will take you down so that you will return. Unfortunately, verse 15, though I disciplined and strengthened their arms, Yet they devise evil against me. They return, but not to the Most High. They are like a treacherous bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword for the cursings of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. So, you would think they would turn, that they would come, that they would rejoice. And if you just let your eye fall down on Hosea 8, verse 2, Israel will cry to me, my God, we know you. And you're thinking, great, it's happened. Fake news. <laughs> That's what they're crying out. But again, it's, it's again a matter of, um, wow, we, we, we've turned so that we can kind of delay God's judgment. We, we're, we're hopeful that he'll, he'll see this little fix-up job we've done and that he'll just kind of overlook it. Um, Verse 3, Israel has rejected the good. The enemy will pursue him. They set up kings, but not by me. My guess, thought is, so God allowed the split of the, the nation, but he kept the line of David going in the southern kingdom. Let's see his promise. The root of David, right, will spring up, and he, he keeps that line there. In the northern kingdom, there were over eight dynasties. Okay, so there are over over eight, and I, I think if I'm thinking remembering this correctly, seven of the eight were started by by the next king killing the old dynasty. Okay, That's the way God set things up. Oh, right. God says, look, I, I've established the king of uh, David's line. And there were those that he used in the northern kingdom that he used to carry out his judgment, his justice, um, but for the most part, they were setting up kings of their own. Um, they'd set up not only rulers, but they'd set up idols. Um, verse 5, my anger is aroused against them. How long until they attain to innocence? Verse 14 of chapter 8, Israel has forgotten his maker. And... So not only forgotten their God, but forgotten their maker, forgotten that there's one who has, has created them. Um, verse 9, uh, chapter 9. Verse 1. Do not rejoice, O Israel, with joy like other peoples. You have played the harlot against your God. You have made love for hire on every threshing floor. 
The threshing floor and the wine press shall not feed them. The new wine shall fail in her. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt and shall eat unclean things in Assyria. This is God's pronouncement of judgment. I've taken you out of the land. I promised you the land. I've blessed you in the land. You've not remained faithful and true, so I will remove you. Again, not because I hate you, but because I desire that you would walk in my ways. Um, again, pronouncing the judgment. Um, and so then, I, as I came down through there, Hosea 9 9, um, they are deeply corrupted, as in the days of Gibeah, he will remember their iniquity, he will punish their sins. So, um, do you remember the, the crime of Gibeah? <laughs> I had to look it up. All right. My Bible trivia wasn't that great. Um, let me remind you how it happened. End of Judges, we have people doing that which is right in their own eyes. Right? And in Judges 19, um, we have kind of a repeat of the whole Sodom and Gomorrah situation. Um, as they're making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, worthless fellows, surrounded the house, beating on the door, and they said to the old man, the master of the house, bring out the man who came into your house that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house, went out to them and said to them, no, my brothers, do not act so wickedly since this man has come into my house. Do not do this vile thing. Behold, here are my virgin daughter and his concubine. Let me bring them out. Violate them. Do, that, do with them what seems good to you. But against this man, do not do this outrageous thing. But the men would not listen to him. So the men seized his concubine and made her go out to them. They knew her and abused her all night until the morning. As the dawn began to break, they let her go. And as morning appeared, the woman came and fell down at the door. The master comes out, thinks that she should get up. She's dead. He doesn't know it. Um, he puts her on the donkey. The men rose up and went away to his home. And when he entered his house, what does he do? He cuts her up into pieces and he sends a piece to each tribe and says, this is the shame of Israel. Rise up. Rise up for this crime. Um, all who saw it said, such a thing has never happened or been seen from the day that the people of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt until this day. Consider it, take counsel and speak. And so, this horrendous crime it is used and finally um, arouses Israel to, to make some change in their course. And, and God says, look, this is the same thing. You, you, have, you have gone so far astray that I, I, am, I, am, I am going to make it obvious that, that you must come back. Um, where to break? <laughs> um, let's, we'll finish, let's just finish here in nine. Um, Verse 14, give them, O Lord, what will you give? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. Right? Don't let them multiply. Don't let them continue on. Take their life from them. Verse 15, all their wickedness is in Gilgal, for there I hated them. Because of the evil of their deeds, I will drive them from my house. I will love them no more. All their princes are rebellious. Ephraim is stricken. Their root is dried up. They shall bear no fruit. Yes, they were, were they to bear children, I would kill the darlings of their womb. My God will cast them away because they did not obey him. And they shall be wanderers among the nations. Now, isn't that a happy note to end on? No, it's not. But H Hosea continues to bring before them their sin. And, and they're not shocked by it. And God says, look, I don't know how to make it graphic enough for you that sin is sin and that 
it has the price and, and that I love you and that I want you to do what's right. But if you sin, I will punish. And again, I, I do understand. I, I struggle too with sin and, and need to continually remind myself Christ died for my sin. And that, that's not just a, you know, shouldn't be just a little patent phrase. Wow, you know, Christ died for my sin. Praise God. He did. And that's good. But Christ died horribly for my sin, my anger, my lying, my deceit, my lust, my laziness my gluttony my christ died christ died for my sin so that i don't face eternal punishment and so i must be careful I must be careful with my thoughts and my deeds, my words, because Christ died for my sin. Let's pray. Lord God, we are tempted and we, we understand the, the strength of temptation in our battle against sin. Lord God, we are so grateful for your gracious mercy, uh, for your overwhelming love, for your pursuing faithfulness, for your desire for us to be blessed and the blessings that you give in spite of. Lord, there is nothing that good that we deserve, and yet you continually pour out. And Lord, help us, help us to understand and wrestle with that this week, that you bless us in spite of our sin and that our sin, though paid for, cannot be lightly done. Help us. Help us to not be like Israel and Judah. Lord, we can only do that by your power. Convince us, convict us, strengthen us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks so much for studying along. We'll finish up. Oh, 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 oh. We had that many slides to go. Um, so next week we'll, we'll be in Hosea. I wasn't sure we'd get to Isaiah, but Hosea will be where we're at. Uh, two weeks, uh, Eli and Sadie uh, will be sharing some more about uh, how they do missions and the burden of missions. Um, because we'll be with James and Sarah and Sean. Um, and I'm really looking forward to holding the squishy baby. Um, the 24th is our Acts 246 night and Awana pumpkin carving. The 31st, uh, the MAPS kids are planning trunk or treat. Uh, they do probably need uh, a few people who would be willing to help out in the parking lot uh, to because they would like to serve, but they would also like to trick or treat, all right? And I understand that, uh, that's, that's quite all right. Uh, but then that means some of us will have to fill in for them uh, while they go. Um, if you're interested in that, please make sure that you see Kathy or Marlena uh, so that they know that you're willing. What I need to know is, is are you staying home and, and doing trick or treat and ministering to your community? Or are you planning, or would you plan to be here in the service? I'm more than willing to study and, and, and have service while we also are ministering to our community. But if none of you are going to be here, I really don't need to just preach to hear myself talk, okay? <laughs> I, I'm not against talking to myself, uh, but, you know, so I, 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 do, I do want you to think through that and let me know. Uh, so we can make that decision in the next couple of weeks. But thank you so much for coming, and we are dismissed. <laughs>